Hey everybody, we're doing a double feature with two videos today. One was about the quirks of compression in the Logic Compressor. And for this one, I wanna showcase one of my absolute favorite features of this. So this is one of the features that I just love about this tool that I think you'll maybe be interested in using on some of your projects. So what I have here is this project I'm working on this section. I'll play the whole part so far and then I'll showcase what I'm doing with the drums. Okay, so this drum part is just using the drummer track inside Logic. And what I'm doing is fairly heavily compressing it. And I mean, it's not like over the top, but definitely have some compression on here where a threshold that's pulled quite a bit down into the sound. And I've got a ratio three to one, which means that if, if we even go up to minus 20 or minus 10, that it's going to be like 10 or so or more decibels of gain reduction. So pretty heavily compressing. Now, what I want to focus on is this mix knob right here, which allows us to change the amount between the input that's coming into the compressor and the output, or in other words, the uncompressed versus the compressed. So I can actually do a mix of the two. And there's a few things to note about this. One of them is, is that it is time aligned, which means when I do this, as I move it down, you're going to see my correlation meter staying in the positive. That means we're not getting any cancellation due to things being out of phase with itself. So you can see no matter what I was doing there, it was staying in the positive. That's great. That means they've thought through a lot of the details of this. What this means then is that I can have a highly compressed signal mixed back in with the uncompressed signal. So we call this parallel compression or New York style compression. There are a lot of techniques for this, but usually it involves multiple tracks or a bus where you're actually compressing one and then mixing back in the uncompressed one. And in this case, we can do that with a single knob. But there are, are a couple of small things to think about when we're doing this. First of all, there can be this huge level difference. So the level difference between what's coming in and what's going out just due to makeup gain or whatever else is going to change that. So the way I change or work with this is that I set the input level so that it really closely or is in the same ballpark as the output. And let me show you how I do that. So first of all, I will do this mostly by ear because compressed and uncompressed when you're comparing them, it's like apples and oranges to a certain degree. But you can at least get it close. So first thing you could do is just set up your compression however you want it. And in this case, I actually had this turned up quite a bit more for the makeup gain. Let me undo that change just now. Okay, so then I actually went through and beefed up the input gain knob right here by six decibels to about where that compression level had ended up. And then I pulled down the this makeup gain area to match. And then I just did a bunch of testing, listening back and forth with my knob here. And if I felt like one was louder than the other, then I would make changes. So let me show you how this sounded before I did that, just so you can hear the before and the after. Hear how it's so much softer on the input? So again, the change that I made took this down to minus two and took the input gain up by six. Oh, not minus two, just two. And you can hear one is far more compressed on the output and the input is just louder. So as I combine these, 
you're going to have some of the natural dynamics, the peaks, the valleys of the sound, all of that's still going to be partly there because we have the input uncompressed sound, then it's just being slightly mixed with the compressed sound. So the nuances of the tails of the drums as it's being compressed, all of that really fills in some of the gaps of the more natural sound. So what we end up with is a more natural overall sounding drum kit that still has the benefits of some of the compression. If we want to change the overall gain, we do that here with the output gain knob, which controls both of those. Okay, just a really quick tip about that. That's all I want to talk about was just the mix knob and how you can use it and maybe some of the thought process behind using it. And that's it. So I hope you're having a great week. Hope you enjoyed both the videos that came out today. If you made it through both of them, definitely consider becoming a patron. Link is in the description down below. But either way, just like, share, comment, all of the good stuff. So have a great weekend.